Hello everybody, my name is Paul. I'm a country realtor and I live near the town of Lexington, Virginia. I talk a lot about homesteading because that's my favorite type of lifestyle and I live that way myself. So today I'm going to talk a little bit more about buying your property that you want for homesteading and finding all the best features on the property because there's a lot of times when people buy land they don't see all the features that they could get from a piece of land. They don't necessarily do a due diligence type of operation and investigation into the land that they're buying. And a lot of times people get really lucky. Sometimes people buy a piece of land and they find out, darn, I got a spring on the land, I got some nice timber and stuff, or mushrooms or different kinds of things that they find on their property. But if you do some due diligence when you buy your property and you think outside the box a little bit, you can find things on the property that other people might overlook, other buyers, and even the seller might overlook Sometimes they might not even realize that they have a property as valuable as it is. And if you know how to do cosmetic uh, improvements on any house or any kind of property, you can make a lot of equity on a property very quickly because a lot of people will uh, unload a property. Sometimes it's an estate sale or someone dies or elderly or something. And they don't want to fix up the home and everything. So they just say, okay, well, look, you know, the home is basically good, but, you know, we don't want to fix it up. So if you want to buy it for a cheap price, fine, we'll sell it to you. So I want to use an example property that I was involved in a little while ago. And it has a, a lot of the elements in it that uh, we came to a conclusion. We did a lot of due diligence. It took over a month. We brought a forester in there. We were really thinking about what, what's going on with this property. And then it has some issues because it, there was a tenant in there and he wasn't allowed to leave. But anyway, so... In the meantime, we had a chance to investigate this property and drive around a little bit. And the funny thing is that we weren't allowed to go inside the house because it was messy. We just got a tiptoe in there one time, just quickly, like, look around. Okay, I see it's kind of a mess. And they wouldn't, they didn't want us to look at the house very much. So, but we had to kind of do an evaluation and figure, okay, well, the house was 1908. I'll tell you a little bit about it here. 1908 house, it was in the situation on this land here. Um, here's a little overview of the piece of property. And as you can see, this property up here is all hillside. Way up on the top of here is a ridge. This is all forest up here. Okay, and so this property goes way up here. And there's a there's actually a dirt road, like a gravel road to service the towers on the top of the hill. that goes right behind this property up here in the back. And up here you can get back in there and there's some really nice piece up there. Right in here. Okay, and then down here is where the house is. And there's a ravine that runs down this hill. So all the water that comes down this ravine, that's where they situated the house in the old days, at the bottom of this ravine, where we were told that there was a spring at one time. So a spring on a piece of property is a really nice nice feature to have. And a lot of times they put these old houses near the bottom of a ravine so they could get uh, you know the water coming down the ravine. Now, in addition, this piece of property had another two-acre parcel over here. And once upon a time, there was some kind of a some land. I'll show you the little, here's a little better diagram here. Down here, once upon a time, we showed the satellite photos. This was cleared more. You see, this is all steep here, the terrain. And up here, there's kind of a knoll and a beautiful home site over here. And there was a, a logging road that went up this ravine all the way up here. And then you could get access to this. All this land was here, unoccupied land around here. Really, really nice. And there's a house down here. A nice field here and then there's a stream that ran along here so in addition you had a stream and you had a well in the septic and the 1908 house and there was a shed there a tool shed and then there was also a really really old chestnut log uh, barn it was really kind of falling down but it was a sight to see so we had this is 45 acres we had a guy come in here and take a look at the wood the lumber and the timber and there were some really old nice trees up in the back there on the top of this hill here and it hadn't been lumbered in a really long time and some of those trees were really really nice and they were like a hundred feet tall some of them and they had like a, a 30 40 50 feet run of straight trunk of straight up there beautiful trees there were chestnut trees there were walnut trees well the chestnuts we found later but there was a walnut trees there they had the oak and they had the um a bunch of other poplar trees and maples and yeah it was a full of nice trees and then it also had berries. We found persimmons on it. We found chestnuts on the tree, on the property. Then there was a hickory nut tree. And then there was a stream. 
on the side that brought some water down and it was really beautiful. So what I'm getting at is there were so many features about this property and it was being overlooked by a lot of people because the house frankly was in bad condition uh, in some ways. I mean the septic and well worked and the funny thing is the people that over there they kept talking about the snakes that they saw in the living room. <laughs> One day we were busy we saw a giant uh, one of these big black snakes that was crawling from underneath the house up to this tree and we watched it go across the road uh, big huge snake, black snake, they're not poisonous, but so we were looking at this piece of property trying to figure out what to bid on this thing and uh, it turned out that you know the woman got it uh, for about um, 10,000 over under what they were asking but there was a lot of dialogue between well what do we do with the house, you know, was it a tear down house, do you, can you do something with the house now the question is what do you do with the land, what she wanted to do with this land, she had had some participation in rebuilding an old house in a, a couple times in her life. So she wasn't scared of rebuilding a house, an old house. And this was a fairly small house compared to some that she's owned, this particular buyer. So she wasn't intimidated by that. It had a septic in the well. It had a leak in the roof, of her, which was subsequently fixed. Now, if you have a septic and well and a roof and some rooms, you can live on that property, basically. It may be a little rustic, but you can live on a property in a home like that and get all the benefits of a home with a roof and everything and while you're building another house or in her case she's going to build a number of places on the property that have for a glamping site. You see now what we found out another thing there's a trail that ran up here that actually you could bring a pickup truck here or a four-wheeler all the way up through the top so that was access was beautiful uh, extra feature of this property that you know it takes a lot to build a road um, you know, wide enough for a pickup truck to go up. And then there's another road back up here where you could get access from the back. So there's another entrance and that was also not really popularized in the listing. On, and then you could get back in there and it was very, very private and nobody around up here. And then there's another really beautiful building site up on this here with the big, huge, tall trees. And so what you're looking at here is you have 45 acres in a two acre zoning for homes. You have a bunch of possible building sites. You can subdivide it. There's already one two acre parcel that was sectioned off. So that was another advantage. It had all the trees, the driveways in place. The septic and the well was also in place. It had a shed for storage. Then we heard about the spring and we found out that the funny thing is after the purchase was done, about a month and a half after the purchase was done, we had the 500 year rainstorm and all the water kids pouring down the ravine and started washing out the driveway. But now we had to, you know, there was, it gave some, uh, you know, notification that there needs to be some proper channeling of the water because if you ever get that again, but you know, that's common on, on anytime you build on a hillside you're going to expect water to come down there so just keep, be careful where, where you put your your home site now in this particular case i think this particular home site in this particular map here it was way down here you had to drive in and maybe about 100 yards up a slight gravel slope to get to the house so it was a nice setback. Sometimes when you set back a home from, from the road, now the electric company, they'll give you the first 50 feet for free. And if you want your house 500 feet back from the road, <laughs> you better get out your pocketbook. But this particular house had already had a, uh, a pole on there, which is another. It had also the electric pole was on the property and also had a, a street light that went on at dark. So, you know, in the farmer's area, it's good to have a street light that goes on at night because it's super dark out there in the countryside. There's no other street lights. So basically, you had all the fixings of a homestead. You could live there. You have all this land. You could harvest lumber. You could build it. You could, you got soil there that hadn't been toiled, uh, used for a long time. Again, there was a um, part of this property had couple acres of good soil farmland uh, you could put a garden in. You could put a lot in two acres, um, especially if the soil had not been, um, it just been hay basically for years and years and the deer come and eat it and they leave their droppings and land like that with soil and the rich soil is just like just waiting to have some great crop growing there or maybe some sunflowers or a nice garden and it's all organic now. 
So again, having the wildlife that comes to your property, if you have the water and other, the chestnuts and the trees and, and the flowers and everything, and bees, bees come to your property. If you walk around a property and some people say, oh man, honey, there's a bee's nest over there. I don't know if we should buy this house. And then other people buy the property because, hey, yeah, I see a bee's nest over there. That's a good, good, got bees. So uh, I'm making this video basically about the different aspects of things that you can find on your property that are unexpected or overlooked by many buyers that actually have real value. Soil, fencing, if you see fencing on a property, hey, you know, it costs a lot of money to build a fence around an acre of land and a lot of pain in the neck. Now, if you have fence, in one case, in this particular property here, the fence was interfering with some of the access to another part of the property. But you can make a gate in the fence that already exists rather than have to build a whole new fence from scratch, you see. So, again, look for all the different advantages on a piece of property. If the landscaping is done well, um, if the drainage is done well, if it's got good roof and gutters. On some of these old houses, you have these tin roofs. Now, they might look ugly sometimes, but I'll tell you, some of those tin roofs last for many, 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 many years because they didn't like to get up there and put those roofs up there. So they had to make sure that when they put a roof up there, it lasted a while, those old tin raised roof, ridge roofs, you see. Now, they might leak now and then, but usually around the seams. So that's another um, really good thing to look for on property what uh, logs, if you have trees that can be felled, for example, I know a person who had a lot of land left to her by her dad. And, you know, they had a forester come in there and look there and said, man, your dad just left you $100,000 worth of lumber here. It's all nice stately yellow pine just standing in a row waiting to be harvested on level land. You see, a lot of people think, oh my God, look at all those pine trees. What am I going to do with that? There's no good soil here. <laughs> so, well... There's people waiting to buy the pine trees, and what they do with pine trees typically is they make either board lumber if it's straight enough, or they'll make a pulp. They'll use the spare from the, the cutting and make a chipboard and that sort of thing, and mulch. So again, berries, uh, various kinds of um, fruit-bearing trees or medicinal plants. There's a lot of herbs and plants that are native around in many parts of the country, especially in, in where there's a lot of forestry. And some of these plants have hundreds and hundreds of years of traditional use, and they were just neglecting them now. But if you find, for example, on a property I was living in, they had echinacea everywhere. Well, you get on the con you can order an echinacea, go down to the health food store, and get a bottle for twenty-five bucks, <laughs> or you can just have a whole bunch growing on your property, and it's all fresh, and you just make it whatever you want. You see, so there's a lot of things like that that look for all the different little things on a piece of property, whether it's maybe fish in the pond that might be there, or or you have like a spring, like I said, or fruit trees or nut trees. That's another good thing. If you have a a full chestnut tree full of those nice American chestnuts. Boy, man, they're just, you can sell them all day long on, in the right seasons. Plus you can harvest them and you can plant them. Again, you can plant the seeds of some of these native trees and you can propagate them. If you want to create a nursery, some people want to make a fir tree, they plant Christmas trees. If you have the right kind of land, you can just start a, a new little forest for, you know, harvesting. It's just like a crop. Uh, and let the trees grow and grow and part of the land. Maybe you just don't want to use that part of the land for a while. Just let the trees grow and let your grandchildren harvest them. So I don't want to make these videos too, too long. And I enjoy all the feedback that I get and uh, the likes and shares. I listen to a lot of other people's content. And I'm very fond of browsing around the Internet and seeing what people are doing out there. I want to create a group. I want to get a lot of people together virtually or physically just to homestead because we really really need it farms without farms we got no food and it's such a wonderful way of living on the homestead life when you have some contact with animals the children and you can have a regular job you don't have to make a full-time farm out of it but you can have a few animals and have a little bit of space around you and nature and and some plants and fruit trees and so on and growing that will be a really bonus and those kind of properties if they're well developed over years you'll have no problem selling them in the future for a really good uh, price because it, people love attractive homesteads and especially if they're well managed and uh, look attractive physically so thanks again for listening and I hope to see you in a lot of my other videos and please like and share if you find this valuable content. Bye.